Assalamu alaikum and welcome back everyone chapter 3-2 of the Arduino series. In this video we're going to cover TDRs, temperature dependent resistors. We're going to go over the different types and I'm going to go over a small project that will allow us to detect the temperature of the environment that the circuit. Now there are two types of thermistors. We've got NTC and PTC. NTC which is the one that I have stands for negative temperature coefficient which means as temperature increases resistance decreases in a certain relation. PTC, which stands for positive temperature coefficient, means as temperature increases, resistance increases along. Now, each type of thermistor has its own suitable application. However, I'm going to be using an NTC for this video. Now, NTCs and PTCs have their own different types of thermistors. Each is manufactured differently with different materials, changing the chemical and physical properties, making them respond to temperature changes differently. Now, for this video, we're going to use a breadboard. We're going to need three male-to-male -male jumper wires. We're also going to have to use a thermistor and a resistor that have equal or similar resistance levels. I'm using 10K resistor and a 10K thermistor. Now, this video is going to be a little bit heavy on the formula side. We are going to be using maybe three or four formulas regarding just to be able to calculate the temperature and convert it to either Celsius or Fahrenheit. It is not too difficult. However, you do have to understand how everything gets substituted how everything works and how we derive the values. Now the circuit's gonna be very small, so we'll get right into it. We wanna start off by connecting the thermistor with the fixed resistor in such a way that the current will flow only in one direction. Following this, you wanna connect one of the legs of the thermistor to five volts. On the same column that has the TDR and the resistor, you wanna plug in another wire and connect that to A0 pin of the Arduino. And finally, you wanna ground off the circuit through the end of the fixed resistor. Now, because of the formula and other reasons, you want to make sure that your R1, the first resistor, is your thermistor, and the second resistor, R2, is your fixed resistor. Now, to compensate for the very small circuit, we do have a lot of code, or a lot of variables, really, that we have to go through. To begin with, I make the A0 pin into a variable called analog pin, and I'm going to store the data collected from A0 into another variable called analog input. You want to make sure that the data type for this is float to get decimal places to be as accurate as possible. Now, therm R1 refers to the thermistor. This is going to store the value obtained and calculated from the input voltage. Therm R1 underscore log is going to store the log value of the therm R1. And because I know the value of the fixed resistor, which is 10K, reminder, you want to make sure that your resistor and your thermistor are equal or very similar in resistance. And I'm going to make R2, which is my second resistor, equal to 10,000. Now output V is going to be the variable that's going to store the output voltage that's generated from the potential divider. The data type for it is going to be a float in order again to be as accurate as possible. Now the values of A, B and C's can be obtained from a formula. However, I'm not going to show the formula, nor am I going to calculate the values using the formula. If you are using a thermistor of the same resistance as mine, you can copy the values. However, if you're using a TDR of different resistance, you can do a simple Google search that has the name of the formula, which is called Steenhardt Equation and the amount of resistance that your thermistor has. Now the variable of Kelvin is going to store the value obtained from using the resistance to Kelvin formula. Now these variables Celsius and Fahrenheit are going to have a particular formula within them that solves for the appropriate temperature. Now the last variable D time, this is going to be used to delay what's presented onto the serial monitor just so that we can read it more easily. Now the void setup is going to be very short and sweet. We're going to begin by activating the serial monitor using the command serial.begin with the board rate of 9600. And I tell the Arduino that A0 is going to be an input pin. And I know this because the data is flowing from an external source towards the Arduino. Now when looking into the void loop, don't be intimidated. The formulas there are just not presented very well. However, they're very simple. I begin by telling the Arduino that I want the analog underscore input variable to equal to the analog read of analog pin. This is going to store the value of the voltage in terms of Arduino values between the values of 0 and 1023. Now the whole point of the output V variable is to convert the ADC value obtained into voltages. And this is done by using the formula that's stored within the variable. Now therm R1 is going to be the value of the resistance of the thermistor. And this is calculated by using the formula that's stored within the variable. Now the log value of therm R1 is obtained by using the command log within the parentheses the variable therm R1. And this is going to be stored into therm R1 underscore log, which gets used in the resistance to Kelvin formula. Now the formula that I refer to as the resistance to Kelvin is called the Stan Hart Hart equation. It's a very long equation, however, you have to make sure that everything is substituted correctly. You also want to make sure that your A, B, and C's values are obtained according to the amount of resistance that you're using. The values of the Celsius and Fahrenheit temperatures are obtained by converting the Kelvin to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit. And at the end of the code, I use a combination of serial.print and serial.println commands. 
and they are going to present the temperature in Celsius, Fahrenheit and the resistance of the thermistor and adding a delay command in order for me to be able to digest the values that I see from the serial monitor. Now opening up the serial monitor you will end up seeing the values that we wanted to present. Now if everything is done correctly you will see the temperature is roughly what it should be. Now if you pinch onto the thermistor you will notice two things. You will notice that the temperature will increase depending on which one you're looking at whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit they will both increase and the resistance decreases. If this video has helped you in any way, consider giving it a like. And if you wish to get closer to the community that I'm trying to build, you can find my Discord linked in the description, where you could also access today's code or ask me any questions about this video if there was something you didn't understand.